Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, a podcast designed to help you become the leader you are destined to be. Today's episode is all about constructive coaching because... I know every one of us want to help the people in our lives, right? We want to help our children. We want to help our spouses. We want to help our, our team members, our coworkers. If we're working in a nonprofit organization, uh, if we're just working in a community organization, we all want to be able to help the people around us. And we all want to be able to help them in a way that increases our influence. Because here's the thing. So many of us have great intentions when it comes to helping others. But a lot of times, how that how that help is been is delivered could determine does it increase your influence and it comes across as constructive coaching, or does it decrease your influence if it's if it's accepted as criticism? So I want to break those down, talk about the differences, and then talk talk about how to constructively coach um, the people around you. So. First of all, you know, criticism is usually, well, I think criticism always decreases influence because criticism feels judgmental, right? When anytime we are feeling criticized by someone, it feels though it's not just directed at what we did or how we did it, but it feels like we as individuals are being judged. And nobody likes that feeling, right? That's a negative feeling and it it tends to decrease influence in the relationship. Now, feedback is incredibly helpful, but the feedback is just specific to performance, right? How did I how well did I play this song that I've been practicing? Give me some feedback. Or did I do a good job cooking this meal? Give me some feedback, right? Just specific feedback is not directed at the person, but at the performance. And that can be very helpful. There's definitely a time and place for that. But even more powerful is coaching. And coaching is helping the individual figure out their answer. So I'm going to talk about coaching in in just a minute. So criticism usually is negative, decreases influence. Feedback can be very powerful. Coaching is even more powerful. And coaching, when done correctly, is always constructive. It always increases your influence. So what's the deciding factor, right? A lot of times how we deliver our thoughts, opinions, our advice is going to affect how the individual receives it. Now, of course, every single one of us have a choice to be proactive. So anytime someone says or does something to us, we have an option to be proactive, um, to take it as constructive. And that's, a, you know, that's absolutely a choice. But a lot of times we can can be proactive in delivering that advice or um, opinions or feedback. And sometimes if we're just proactive in how and when and where we deliver it, it can be much easier for the individual to receive it in a proactive way and benefit from it. So I know that that you want to help the people around you. That's why you're listening to a personal growth and leadership podcast. So why not? Why wouldn't we want to get better at helping the people around us? So here's the thing. Most of the time, we as humans, we, it, we're just geared this way. Most of the time, if we want advice from someone, we'll ask. And so a lot of times where we as humans get into trouble is we offer advice to a lot of people without being asked. We just feel like they would benefit from our opinions and our advices, and, and so we give it to them. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But... Um, most of the time, most of us as humans are wired toward, if I want your advice, I'll ask for it, right? So anytime we are delivering unasked for advice or feedback or, or constructive criticism or constructive coaching, anytime it, it hasn't been asked for, um, we're already you know, running a little bit of a risk that the person may take it on the defensive. So ways to avoid that if it if it hasn't been asked for is number one, declare intent up front, right? If we go into the conversation with, hey, I, I noticed something I would like to share an opinion with you. I think that could really help you, but I don't want to 
come across as criticizing you or judging you. So just declare intent on the front end, right? That's always a good idea for any potentially um, difficult conversation is just sit down and declare your intent of, hey, I want to help you. Um, you know, it's almost a way of asking permission. And then it, assuming that they give you permission to do that, then be specific, you know, share the feedback very specifically, how, what specifically they could have done better, what specifically you what did they do? Um, what did they do well? What could they do better? Maybe even compare and contrast, right? Give them a concrete example. Just general feedback usually isn't very helpful, right? Be specific. Like, tell me exactly what I could have done better and what the impact would be, right? So be specific. But that'll be, that's key. If you do those three things, um, when you're offering advice for your, whether it's for your 15 year old on how they're learning to drive or um, your boss at work, right? If you can do those three things when, when that advice is unsolicited, um, that will help increase your influence in the situation. And that will help you um, help the person, right? If you're helping them receive your feedback uh, in a more proactive way, they're more willing to listen. They're not on the defensive. And so it's a much more productive way to have that conversation. So that's, that's feedback. And again, Sometimes we don't get to judge whether that person is going to receive it as criticism and feel judged themselves, right? Sometimes we don't get to make that decision. That's up to the individual, but how we deliver it can be critical and in, in how it's received. So now let's talk about kind of a deeper level. I mean, feedback can be very positive and very powerful, but but coaching is almost taking that to an entirely new level. Coaching is truly helping the individual figure out their answer and their solution from within themselves. And the reason that's so powerful is that a lot of times when we want to offer opinions or feedback or anything like that, we don't always understand all of the dynamics in the situation because we're not the one in the situation. And so it's very difficult to give advice and know with 100% accuracy that it's the best advice for that person because you're not that person. So coaching is helping them find their answer and that will always help you increase your influence with them. And one of the one of the most powerful ways that this point really hit home for me was I remember it's been several years ago and we were we were at a conference Mac and I were at a conference and the everyone in the room it was probably several several hundred people um, was given a couple of um, three of those little round beanbag balls that people juggle with. And so you were partnered up. So everyone in the conference partnered up with someone and each pair had a set of these juggling balls. And so they took turns or we took turns. First, you got an opportunity. Someone had to decide who was going to be the coach, quote unquote, in the, in the pair of the two people and who was going to be the person who learned to juggle. And so the role of the coach in, in our little scenario that we were role playing is that you were to teach the person how to juggle. And of course, the person who was learning to juggle was just going to learn to juggle and just um, take the coach's feedback and advice and, and whatever they told him to do. Now, I, I don't know if you have ever tried to juggle, but it can be very complicated. I cannot do it. I still can't do it to this day. Um, but if you've never done it, it's it's a little complicated because you're tossing up one ball up into the air while simultaneously catching a second ball and passing a third ball from one hand to the other. So hopefully if you do it right, you get all three balls just constantly moving in a cycle from one hand to another and then up in the air and then you catch and then repeat. So you're constantly got all three balls moving. And of course you got two hands and some people can go on to juggle four and five and, and six objects and, and so on. But, but for the practice of the conference, we just started with three. And it was hilarious, right? Um, I was the one who was learning um, first how to, how to, or being coached of how to juggle. And I can't juggle and I'm not very well, you know, I don't have a lot of hand-eye coordination anyway. So, I mean, I was just one of several hundred people in the room, but balls were rolling under tables and being dropped and, and 
rolling under tables and over tables and, and into somebody else's chair and you know because most people don't really know how to juggle and so it was kind of a little chaotic so we did that for a few minutes and then they called us to stop and then they said now switch places so if you were the one learning to juggle now you get the balls and, and give them to your partner and and help them learn to juggle so you switch places in, in role playing and it really wasn't any better right the, now that I had tried to juggle myself, I really wasn't any better at telling the other person how to juggle. I would say something like, well, first throw one ball up into the air and then try to keep your eye on the second ball so that you can catch it while you're passing the third one. And, you know, it's just like there's no way to really tell somebody how to juggle. It was just chaotic again for a few minutes. And so then the, the um, person who was teaching at the conference had us all sit back down and he called a volunteer, a very brave lady, up from the audience and he said, okay, now every single one of you tried to tell the other person how to do what they are doing and most people failed miserably at it. Of course, he was right. He said, so let's, let's look at how someone would truly coach someone into learning to juggle. And when he says that, he means helping them figure out their answer from within. So he brings the lady up on stage and he first he gives her the balls and he says okay try to juggle and she throws one or two up and then she drops one and, and it starts to roll off and he goes and he picks it up and he says stop and think what would you have done differently or what did you do and so she thinks about it for a minute and she says well I tried to throw this one up but I threw it too high and then I couldn't catch it before I needed to, to catch it and throw the other one and he says okay he says work on that and so this goes on for a couple of times and, and every time she would attempt to juggle, he would, you know, and she would drop a ball. He would stop her and he'd say, okay, think about what you did differently. Think about what worked that time. Think about what didn't work. And in about five minutes, this lady who was absolutely terrible at juggling, in about five minutes, without him ever showing her how to juggle, he had asked her the questions and asked her to think through the answers. And in five minutes, she was juggling. And it was an incredibly powerful example of how we, when we want to coach someone or help someone or, or give them advice and feedback, a lot of times we are better served or better serving them if we'll help them find their answer. And I remember that, I mean, that was one of the things that it, it just like, like a light bulb went on for me. It was so, such a powerful example of how a lot of times well-meaning we try to give people advice, but we can be so much more influential if we help them figure out the best scenario for them. And I truly love to do that. I love coaching people um, who are motivated and, you know, ready to take action because that's a, a big part of it. But um, I love to coach someone through a, to a solution. It, it's absolutely empowering to help them figure out the best answer for them. And here's the thing, when you coach somebody like that, they're always, number one, more likely to be successful because it's their solution. It's likely to, more likely to be more effective because again, it's their solution and their scenario and they have all of the information that you may not know. And they're more bought into it. So it's much more powerful. Now, it might take a little longer than just telling someone what to do. There's no doubt. But it's incredibly powerful when we can do that. It's incredibly powerful when we can help um, your kids, for example, right? You could coach your child through, you know, how to how to achieve that um, 100 or that A on that math test. But that would look like instead of telling them to go study, which could feel critical, right? You just say, well, you just need to study harder. And that doesn't really help them. They probably already have heard that they need to study. But instead, you would sit them down and, and if you truly wanted to constructively coach them, you would say, well, where exactly are you having problems with this math? And they might say, well, I've got multiplication down, but you know, algebra is really struggling or um, I'm really struggling with division or, or whatever it is. Maybe it's exponents, I don't know. Um, so you would then you would say, well, what else, what resources do you have available? And they would tell you, well, I can get a tutor. I could look at the, the math book. I could do some practice exams. 
and you could say, you know, just think of all the options that you could do, right? Just just brainstorm. If the goal is to get 100 on this math test, just brainstorm on all the options that would help you through, right? So you've identified the scenario, you've talked about reality is the area that they're struggling in, and then the options of all the resources they have available. And then you say, well, which one of those would work best for you? Which one of those do you want to take action on? And so they might pick two or three and they say, well, I'll practice on these practice problems and I'll ask Mrs. Teacher to, to you know, spend an extra five minutes explaining this problem to me, right? Whatever it is, whatever they choose, it's their solution and they're much more likely to be effective at carrying it out and bought in and committed to it. And you come out of that conversation with the relationship strengthened instead of them just feeling like A, you don't understand and B, you're just judging them for not studying hard enough. So you see the difference where we try to help people a lot of times, especially when we think we know the answer, it is so easy to, to just tell somebody what to do differently. But that's not as much it's not as powerful, it's not as effective, and it, it can decrease our influence a lot of times. So there's a simple acronym that helps you think through this kind of this coaching outline. Um, and it stands, it, the word is GROW, G-R-O-W, right? Think about the goal, talk about reality, think about the options, and then identify the way forward. And what's so interesting is you could coach yourself using this form. Maybe you have a, a problem going on right now in your life. Um, for example, maybe you are trying to write a book and you've been trying to write this book for a year and you could coach yourself through kind of this outline. If the goal is to write a book, well then where's the reality? Maybe you don't have any anything written down right now. And so that's reality. There's a wide gap between goal and reality right now. And then you think about the options. Well, things that I could do to write this book. I could write one page every day. I could write one chapter every week. I could um, first brainstorm on a, a title. I could first identify, you know, I, next I could identify my chapter titles. Um, next I could identify the resources that I need or the research that I need, you know, and just brainstorm on all of the things that you need to do or the options available to you. You could brainstorm on options like, well, I'll get up 15 minutes earlier every day so that I have time to write this book. And that's going to be my book writing time, right? That might be an option. Now you may or may not be bought into any of these options at this point, but just brainstorm on all of the options get a really big list of options and things that would help you move forward and then way forward just identify one two three things um, that's up to you but just identify the next couple of steps right so the 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 trick to this uh, obviously if we're if we're trying to coach ourselves it's really just a thought process in our own brain but the trick to it, when we're trying to help someone else, we're trying to coach someone else, is that we should lead them with questions. And when I say we should lead them with questions, I mean we should influence them with questions. Because it's safe, it doesn't feel like they're being attacked, it's not judgmental, and it really does help them think through the answer. Now, the upside to that is when you ask a question, um, focus on questions like what could you do how could you do this what other options do you have right try to avoid yes or no questions you want to you want them to think into the answer and and come back to you with something right a yes or no question really just shuts down the thought process it shuts down the the dialogue so think about open-ended questions like what and how and what could you do differently um, what resources do you have and these are just questions that provoke thought and it's a great way to influence people um, the other thing is a lot of times you learn so much more about what the other person is thinking right if you just try to give someone advice or just try to tell them what to do right this is an incredibly powerful way to delegate um, because you get to learn what the other person is thinking their thought process it gives you an opportunity to talk about potential roadblocks and so you know it's incredibly powerful because it it um, it develops the individual and that's one of our, our roles as a leader, as a woman, as an influencer. We want to help that other person 
grow around us. And constructive coaching is so much more powerful than just offering feedback. I mean, feedback can be good, right? But but coaching can just be so incredibly powerful. So I just encourage you, you know, as you think about your the relationships and the encounters that you're going to have today, and maybe there's one, just one or two conversations, maybe not today, maybe this week, and think about, instead of just telling someone what to do in that scenario, think about, is there a way I could coach them through that scenario? Um, it, it might be as simple as asking your kids to take out the trash, right? Maybe you've been asking them to take out the trash and every day you have to ask them to take out the trash. You tell them to take out the trash and you wish that, man, that wish they would just learn to take out the trash every day, right? It needs to be taken out every day. You could coach them through and delegate taking out the trash, but, you know, ask them, you know, to think through if you're delegating this chore to them, ask them to think about what are the things that they need, the resources they need. Well, they need trash bags. They need a big trash can outside to put it in. Um, They need an opportunity, you know, ask them to think through that. And then I agree on, you know, some times and some responsibilities to do that, right? That's another way to coach someone through that. And that's a different level of delegation. It also says, hey, I trust you. And so it will help them grow into that responsibility. Now, it takes a little bit of time. Coaching definitely takes a little bit longer, but it's always more powerful in the long run. You know, it's kind of like if if somebody brings a math problem to you and they're like, here, you know how to do math. Help me with this math problem. And you sit down and you solve the problem in 30 seconds and you give it back. What's going to happen every time they need an answer to a math problem? Yep, they're going to come find you because you just solved it for them. It was easy. But if you take the time to sit down and teach them how to do math, then over time, it's going to take a little longer in the front end, but over time, pretty soon, they won't need to come to you every time. So you've empowered them, you've developed them, you've coached them through learning. It's incredibly power- powerful. So constructive coaching, I, you know, I really, I really love to, to share that because we do have to think into it. We do have to be intentional about it, but it is so much more dynamic when we can lead and influence from a coaching position instead of a a feedback or even a constructive criticism position. Until next time. Start increasing your influence and maximizing your potential with Rhea's audiobooks. Available at audible.com, amazon.com, and iBooks. Please visit RiaStory.com to learn about Ria's books, resources, speaking, and training programs. Thanks for listening.